Wow, has it really been four months? Yeah, I think this is overdue. Welcome on in everyone. For those who do not know, my name is Guest, also known as It's Guest Gaming here on YouTube and live on Twitch. And today, the really long overdue September 2022 tier list for Disney Sorcerer's Arena is now here. Chances are, if you're watching this video, you've watched a lot of these in the past few years. And if you're newer here into the community, I greatly appreciate you coming on down, hitting that like button and subscribing here to the channel as we continue more content for Disney Sorcerer's Arena. However, with 160 plus characters in the game, the way that tier lists have been done in the past really is expired. We're going to have to expedite this because nobody wants to be talking about 160 characters for 160 minutes. So we're going to skip right ahead and go into talking about the changes that has happened over the last few months, including how the tier list is now being made. First off, because the roster is so big, the resource gaining events and how much resource you're going to obtain from these events, those are starting to weigh a little bit higher because it is a very daunting task to farm large groups of characters if you're a brand new player, or if you're a long time player, knowing that these events are going to capitalize the most when it comes to things like essences or ascension, etc. We also raised the value of PvP because of what we saw from the road ahead that DSA posted a few weeks ago, that they are looking to build more on that PvP structure. PvP is going to be the bigger focus of the game in the near future, so I pushed that up in the ranking also. Hopefully we gain resources from them too, just like we do Expeditions, where I gave that a little bit of a bump. Some some of the events have been retired, we've had new events and new sub-factions and put it all together and this is what you get. Here in the C, D, and F tiers, not much has shifted. You might have a couple of characters that have moved up, maybe a half a rank, which might have pushed them into the C tier from the D tier, etc. So let's focus on the new characters that have come into the game since May. You see down here in the D tier, we've got Winnie the Pooh, and he really is the worst of the bunch. He's a defensive focused character. That one doesn't work right. Two, the actual kit itself doesn't speak to mega leadership and not just because he has one that does very mild support, I'm talking in the sense of what he does for everybody else. But to really make him work, he has to be used in a Winnie the Pooh trio with Honeypot in a defensive situation. So, you know what? Uh, I'm sorry. Winnie the Pooh, you are what you are. You are your name. Mad Hatter and March Hare, they will start off here in the C plus tier, just barely hanging out outside of the B tier because they can be replaced. If you're looking at the premier characters that came in from the Alice in Wonderland legendary set, they work very well together. However, they have to be that also. They have to be together. And when you have a reliant synergy, it is going to weigh you down as we just talked about. Couple it with the fact that they are a mythical duo and that is the faction that is least used on Honestly, it puts them down, to my opinion, where they perfectly belong. You have the option to use them, and if you use them and you bolster into them, they're going to do pretty good. They're not going to be game-breaking, but they're going to do pretty good. Now, I know there are a couple of very specific characters also down here that really, really shine in very specific game modes. Take a look at Shank and uh, Sally in Raids, or Big Baby in Ascension. These are mandatory, awesome, great characters in those specific instances, so they scored 9 or a 10 in those, but everywhere else, they're just not up to snuff, so it keeps them weighed down. Overall, the C, D, and F tiers are just okay. In the B tier and the B plus tier, all of these can be a star in a specific game mode, not just good in a specific game mode. We see our first appearances of characters from the Lightyear franchise and from a Goofy movie, and honestly, I don't expect either of them to land down here and stay down here. I think by the time we see their event come around a second or third time and we start using them in further game modes, that they are going to absolutely shine, but until that time, I think a B rating is satisfactory. Now, Tigger and Eeyore hanging out right at the very edge of the tier list because we've seen some success with them in a maxed out bolstered scenario at gear nine, mainly in PVP. So they're gonna hang out just barely too. And then in B+, we have two of the more fun characters that have come in the last few weeks, White Rabbit and Cheshire Cat. They are ridiculously fun because they're super solid. The White Rabbit, we've now found his 
in my opinion, pretty official home on the very famous Ian team, replacing Oogie Boogie, for example, for those who were running that prior variation. He's calling to assist, he's putting out fear, he's putting out slow, all on turn one. He's doing a great job, man. I absolutely love the White Rabbit, and if you want to get cheeky, go ahead and use him in PvP with some summons. Oof. Ooh. The Cheshire Cat is the first appearance of MAD really being used well, the new debuff on the Titans. As we talked about in the Alice in Wonderland breakdown video, they are really good because they can control the Titan and stop them from using their abilities outside of their basic, where they're either going to hit themselves if it's something like Two-Headed Rock Titan, or only throw their basic out onto the field. So that amount of control plus his ability to stack damage on his special A, it almost made him A tier, as you see. He's the number one character in the B plus tier. However, there is one other mythical from that collection that does even better than him. Moving on up into the A tier. Here's where we start to see the best of the best, right? Everybody in here has got multiple nines and tens in different rankings within the game. So they're all going to be solid investments. You can bring any of these characters to gear eight, seven stars, start using them anywhere and everywhere, and they're going to do well for you. Safest investments from here on up, obviously. But let's take a look at that butterfly that we were talking about. The Caterpillar from Alice in Wonderland. He is ridiculous because one, his multi-hitting basic is stellar. Number two, the strength of that multi-hitting basic is unreal. Number three, he's issuing MAD and controlling it and extending it regularly out on the battlefield. So both in a PvP and raid setting, that becomes meta. He's putting out a tremendous amount of helpful effects in the raids, including very important effects, in my opinion, like Reflect. So I love, 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 love what he's bringing to the table right now. He surprised us. We now see Max Goof come to the game here in the very top of the A tier, almost A+. I would not be surprised if he moved up into the A-plus later on, as we start seeing more and more people invest into him into gear 8 and get him to 7 stars. The first go-around of the event, many people were disheartened because of how the unlock system worked, unfortunately, which the devs have acknowledged and have rectified. However, once you start getting that T9 double magic on adjacents every turn kind of thing rolling, like, the value of what he brings for magic and helpful effects as a support character may almost be unmatched. So Max Goof is probably the one that intrigues me the most out of the entire tier list, and that's including Lightyear, who is a PvP god and overall ranks higher. But as great as Lightyear is, Max Goof is the character that I next want to get to tier 9, 7 stars, and I hope that you go with me on that journey on Twitch. Every character here has a team, has a home, has a multi-purpose use. I think it's safe to say the A tier is great. But here's the problem that has happened in the last four months of the game. Even with reworking how the algorithm works on how I create this tier list, and I'll tell you confidently, it is long and complex. I was unreal, unreally disturbed at the fact that the S tier did not change one character. We did not have one character come on through that said this was a surprise awesome character. We almost got there with Lightyear. Almost did. But the only legendary to have landed in the last few months is the only character that qualifies for the S tier because of Alice's unique abilities. Something to help battle in PvP against the long-time metas that have been lasting for upwards of a year in certain cases. We didn't have enough that surprised us, because yes, the S tier should be a legendary tier. It should be the tier that takes the longest amount of time to work towards. Your Zeus's, your Ursula's, your legendary characters, your Kiddas, etc. And everybody who's in the S tier deserves to be in the S tier. But where's the asterisk tunes? Where are the ones that make me go, huh? That's a surprise and a half. We got close with Caterpillar, and we got close with Max Goof. Maybe throw Lightyear in there. But when the number one character in the game is still Merida, I think that might call for an outcry that the longtime players need to say Merida needs to be taken down a notch. And I know that's tough to hear, but hear me out. I think the fact that the number one character in the game is something that you can farm is a problem because it means that you've hit the top just by focused farming and now having experience in more mobile games, 
plural. I come to see the problem with that differently. So I guess the only solution that they can do moving forward is they're not going to nerf her because that would be a refund outcry and nobody wants that. What I think is gonna have to happen is that tier 10, as it comes down the pipeline, is going to have to show a rise of new abilities that will be gunned specifically towards what has kept the meta the meta. Alice was the first step in that direction. Balancing the speed in the beginning of a battle, I love that ability and it shows a really positive sign here for DSA. But where are the character abilities that punish you for being fast? Where are the character abilities that punish you for hitting multiple targets? We finally saw that happen with Snow White. I think we need to see it more. Where are the character abilities that punish you for having your team set up in a very specific manner or way? We need characters to come to the game to break these pieces of synergy rather than just continue to add on to them. So this tier list is ending a little bit differently. This tier list is gonna end with the idea that whatever the next big changes that comes to DSA, whether it's Club Expeditions tier 10, whether it's a new raid, whether it's uh, gear tier 10 and level 90 for characters, no matter what it is, it needs to break the meta. Soup is always going to exist, but we need to break the meta. We see them trying. We see it with Lightyear, we saw it with Snow White, we see it with Alice. But all it's done it has all it has done successfully is feed the meta rather than break the meta. Alice is the first character that almost got there. Almost got there. And I want to know from you down in the description, what do you think should come to the game that would do that? That would break the meta. Not soup, but the metas. If you have an idea, throw it in the comments down below. So yes, this is the September 2022 tier list. And if you go back and compare it to May, a lot of it is going to look the same because we haven't had game-changing changes yet. But I will say confidently, as a content creator and a player of this game for over two and a half years now at this point, I really do respect the devs enough and have the confidence in them to do that. Let's support them. Put your ideas down in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching today's September 2022 tier list for Disney Sorcerer's Arena. For those who do not know, my name is Guest, also known as It's Guest Gaming here on YouTube, and of course, as always, live multiple times a week on Twitch. Have a wonderful, wonderful afternoon, everyone.